Hi, Mike. Let's get started with your match analysis. Usually what I do the first uh, look through, I want to say through a match, is I'm looking at court positioning. And court position wise, you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to change anything. You're doing exactly what you need to be doing. I don't see any huge holes in your court positioning. You're always finding your bisector of an angle. If your opponent does hit winners, then it is because it is a good shot and at the appropriate time. It's not because you're leaving wide areas of the court uncovered. Um, so that is a really good thing. Uh, the second thing that I usually look at is shot selection. And the shot selection that I'm seeing is very consistent with where you are at in your uh, tennis career at 3-5, cusp, at some point of 4-0. A lot of the point that both of you play are structured through the middle. The one thing that I do want to say is you want to work a little bit more on your depth. You're getting a lot of balls, and this is when you're re-watching this whole match now with a couple of pointers. They're in this kind of undifferentiated area. Um, now, when you're trying to be more aggressive and you predominantly try to do that with your forehand, um, you are making more mistakes and that is perfectly fine because you have to, of course, risk a little bit more uh, to turn the point in your favor. What I don't see, and this is really good, is you're not going for wild, crazy highlight shots when you're somewhere here on the run and you want to go for a down the line winner. Um, you're going with good margins, usually for cross court uh, balls. I think the longer the match goes, um, your errors pick up a little bit. So especially at the very end of the match, um, I want to ask you to look at your forehands. And I also put that in the um, little write-up that the contact point and the spacing of your forehand varies quite a bit and it gets a little bit more so at the end of the match. So I'm thinking you might have gotten a little tired. It was a long first set that you played. Um, and also the duration of the points go down a little bit. You lose more points in the longer point range um, and you're also making more mistake uh, within the first one or two touches of the ball. So those are, uh, to my mind, on the forehand, more footwork issues and that's potentially something that you want to work on um, a little bit more with your coach at home because he can help better or she uh, with spacing and the contact point. Um, and that's also not necessarily the focus of a match analysis. Now let's get into where I think you have huge, huge potential to really exploit that as one of your major strategies. You got to come to net. Uh, you want 80% of the 15 points that you came in with. Um, not all of them you came in with on your term. Um, and that is what we want to look at, which are the balls that lend themselves to be um, used as approach shots. But regardless of how you got to net, you won 80%. That's unbelievable that's a great um, stat right there and with you being six foot one you're gonna be a nightmare to be played because what you're doing when you're coming in obviously you're asking your opponent to constantly hit very precise balls and that is something that yeah if they're better than you great but you know if they're within your strike zone if they're within reach then that's gonna turn the match in your favor if you can be more aggressive with the right shots so let's break down your net play a little bit. So the first one that I want to show you is this here. So this next point, you're coming in, not necessarily with a, you know, a planned action there. It's not necessarily on your terms. But see here, even though you're really on the run there, you're getting that ball. Six foot one nightmare to play and having to pass you all the time. So that was the first one. The next one is um, where we want to lay down some rules of thumb if you want to. Um, which are the balls that lend themselves to be used as approach shots? So if I can find that here at 411. So let's play this point here. So this is better structuring at the point. Balls are a little deeper. This is where he hits a little shorter ball. And this is your marker, basically your cue of when you wanna get up there and you're doing it well. When you have both of your feet inside the baseline and the ball bounces a little shorter. That is when you wanna come in 
um, and you're doing a good job going down the line because you just have to take two, three aggressive steps, which I think you could have taken a little bit more aggressively there. Um, but you're in. And again, see how difficult it is to lob you because you're a great athlete there and that is what you want. You want to force them to pass you all day long. Even if you're losing a couple of points, that's perfectly fine because then you're also getting into the fact that they have to, when they structure points, they have to constantly hit deeper balls to keep you from coming in. So that is what you want to do. You want to put that kind of pressure on your opponent. And as we see then in the duration of this match, if you rewatch that, he's not able to keep up or withstand um, that pressure. So let's look at the next ball on that one. I couldn't care less if you lose that point because you're coming in. Sorry, that's not the one. This is the one. So you're coming in at the right time. Again, well inside the baseline, of course, and you're missing that one. The only thing that I do want to say is if you're coming in with this kind of ball, It's easier for you to cover the court if you're coming in hitting this ball down the line. Because if you're pushing him across court, which is what you do, right? So he's going to be over here. Let's let this run a little bit more. So you're pulling him over here. Right there, that's where he's making contact. He has this here a little bit more open and he's got the ball behind you. Right? So for you to come from this position to your bisector of an angle, which is about here, you have more steps to take than if you had taken that ball down the line and you literally follow that up with two, three of your strides and you're in a perfect position. So I think one of the reasons why you're missing this volley here is because you're a little off balance and you will be more on balance if you, you know, have to move less. So... But again, you're just investing in the future when you're coming in. So I do like that aggressiveness. Um, and just coming in there. Do it. So you're being drawn in. See if you can come one or two steps back because you're really, really close. And even with six foot one, there is a whole lot of room back here. So one or two little steps back so you don't over close when you're being drawn in. Yep, come on in. Maybe a little more aggressive. Just a little bit more dynamic there to also kind of you know, have this big mass that you are moving up faster and also visually put some pressure on the other guy, right? So that he doesn't have time to get the ball down to your feet. Um, but again, those are all the balls that I think you're seeing now. Go in, go in, go in, force him to constantly um, pass you. So now let's look at a couple of balls or a couple of uh, points where I think you could have come in, which will make it even more difficult for the other guy. Um, they're not necessarily the absolute no-brainer situations where it's a must that you come in, but the more comfortable you get with this um, aggressive uh, style, the more you want to take those opportunities. So let's look at those. So here you see on the last ball that looks a little bit more like you're still playing that as a rally ball or you want to finish the point. That is, to me, an approach shot. Right? You move them around, you finally get the short ball that you want, take that down the line, and again, you have two, three aggressive steps and you're in a fantastic volley position. And that is something, if you get more comfortable with that, uh, you will force him to constantly hit deeper balls, and that alone forces errors. So that was one opportunity that I think you missed a little bit. Um, there are two or three more that I want to show you. So here you're getting stuck a little bit in no man's land and then you're retreating even though you have them on the run. So two, three times you have the opportunity there to come in. And again, you have your feet inside the baseline, way inside the baseline. Do follow them in and put the pressure on him to make decisions. 
Um, let's look at one more. Same type of situation, take that in and come on in. And then of course the other benefit with coming in is you don't have to play these long, long points that are you know, very draining. So you see the, the um, rule of thumb that I do want to give you is if you have both of your feet inside the baseline and the ball um, that allows you to step up that close or that far is a ball that lands around the service line or even inside the service line, that is a great opportunity for you to come in with. And I really, really suggest that you're working on that and really trying to uh, be a little more aggressive in that way. Even if you lose a couple of matches, even if you lose a couple of points, doesn't matter. That's going to be something I think that will make a real difference. Um, so let's look at two more things um, that I'm seeing. One is uh, the fact that you, I think I alluded to that before, is that you have your forehands. Um, actually, the stats that I got from there was that you have 34 unforced uh, errors on the forehand and the contact points vary a little bit all over the place um, as opposed to eight backhand unforced errors. Uh, we do see that in these points here that you absolutely prefer your forehand. That's how you want to keep it. That's perfectly fine. Again, work with your coach at home. Um, a little bit more on finding a proper contact point and the proper spacing. There's one tactical decision that um, I want to make you aware of. So a lot of people that you're going to play are probably still playing higher, deeper balls. Again, this is very consistent with um, 3.5s, that just the net clearance on a lot of rally balls is higher and more through the middle. So you will be forced to move back behind the baseline, and that takes a little bit of more patience. You're doing a great job on this ball, right? You've given it ground, you've given yourself space here, and you keep that ball between hip and shoulder on your contact point. And you're sending it back high and deep. So you have time to come forward, and ideally you do to him what he just did to you. On the second ball, however, where you're being pushed off the baseline again a little bit, you're not working quite as much anymore. So that is where you just want to have more patience and potentially then pick on the weaker side. I think his backhand is a little bit um, more liable to make mistakes there. So that is where you have to just settle down a little bit more. And there were two or three instances in the match. On the backhand, you're doing a good job returning that with more net clearance and higher balls right back. So just on the forehand, even though you do want to be aggressive, try not to be too greedy on the balls where you're really far back behind the baseline because that's not the opportunity um, that you want. So those are the major takeaways that I had. The come on in, do come in a lot, you must come in. 80% of 15 points uh, won at net is really good. So that's really something that you can um, use as to make that or build your, your game around a little bit more. Uh, then seizing the opportunities when you have both of your feet inside the baseline and just attacking shorter balls, even if you're getting past, even if you're missing some balls when you're more aggressive, because again, that's just setting you up in the longer run of the match because you're challenging him uh, to play more precise, basically over a longer duration of time. And then work on the vari variation in your contact and strike zone. Um, on the forehand a little bit because that is why you're producing most of your unforced forced errors um, because you're just not properly spaced. So I hope that helps. would be fantastic um, to see another match in maybe two, three, four months um, and you know where you implemented those things and then we can go from there.